Hi, everybody. It's just a few minutes past high noon. I'm Jay Jennings. I'm Tom Betts. And we are the hosts of Once Upon a Time in Spaghetti Westerns, the podcast. This is episode 27, and it's a long-awaited one. We took all the fans' letters, and it's our special show on Mario Brega, Tom. So should we uh, get this show started or what? Let's go. Hi, everybody. Welcome back, Tom. That was my surprise. It was very good. Excellent. What music is that from, Tom? What theme Great song? Great silence. <laughs> of course it is. I'm sure I'll get a flag or a warning, but who cares? Yeah. We're celebrating Mario Brega, Tom. That's right. We'll send him after him. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to welcome you all to another uh, fine edition of this podcast, the one and only about Spaghetti Westerns. I want to thank you from the UK to Japan to the Soviet Union to Belgium to the United States to Beverly Hills, California, Tom. We got fans all over the world. Anaheim, California. Anaheim <laughs> and Canyon Country, too. Canyon Country. So, right. So Chino. Anyway, let me Chino. Chino Hills, Tom. <laughs> anyway, we want to thank all of you fans. We're over 1, 1,100 followers, over 1,000 likes. It's going to grow, Tom. I predict 3,000 this time next year, Tom. Mm. Mm. <laughs> what happened, Tom? Couldn't hear you for a second there. Okay. 3,000 likes, 3,000 followers. It'll be, what, show 60 or something. Anyway, yeah. more, more than that. More than that. Anyway, enough about me. That's the one and only Tom Betts, Spaghetti Westerns historian. Uh, co-founder or aftertaker or undertaker, Tom, of Westerns All Italiana, kept it strong for over 30 years. It is the, uh, what, the benchmark of what all future theses, books, newsletters about Spaghetti Westerns are about, Tom. I tried. That's it. Keep right. me going. Right. You're watching this live on Facebook.com slash Spaghetti Westerns podcast, uh, also on YouTube same channel, Once Upon a Time in Spaghetti Westerns. Uh, also want to remind you, after the show is over, please go to facebook.com slash westerns all italiana. That's where you'll hear from Tom. He gives post comments. It's like a post game show for a Dodger game. Tom is there in the dugout with Tommy Lasorda. That's all an in joke for all you West Coasters. Anyway, we got a lot of stuff planned for you at the end of the show. Tom, we know we're going to have Book of the Week, of course, right? I'm actually going to join in. Autograph of the Week. Tom, I have a special autograph for everybody that is super rare. Um, Pee Herman? <laughs> I know you have <laughs> one. Make a, I? You make a spaghetti right. western? <laughs> right. He made one. Uh, what was it called? Once Upon a Pee Wee, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to have Album of the Week. Tom's going to give our weekly news, which we always look forward to. But we have a new addition a new addition to the show tom what is it the wai vault i thought we would show the viewers how tim and i collected information on the films for the uh, the fanzine and uh, the stuff that people sent us from all over the world right that we could use in the fanzine it was, it's a i just stumbled across a couple of the folders i said well jay can show his posters too and we can show people how we collected information because it's we can explain it one way, but to show people, they get a better idea of what we went through. Right. Absolutely, Tom. Uh, we want to say hi to all our fans in Facebook land and in YouTube land. Uh, we got the two shot, which is cutting out 
the poster, so we'll go back to the why, Tom. One there of my go. favorite Henry Silva films, Tom. Hills Run Red. Right. Um, I've got quite a few uh, rare objects to art from this film. That's the photo boost. Uh, anything with Silva pointing a gun with a with a hot lady behind him, <laughs> I'm I'm getting Tom. Nicoletta Machiavelli. That's her. Wow. Yeah. What? They, how apropos a name. Exactly. But anyway, uh, so Tom, uh, let's get on with the show as we celebrate the one and only uh, Mario Brega. What's his uh, background and who is he in, in fandom? Is he a cult figure, Tom? Yeah, he'd be a cult figure. I've, that's what I've got in my little bio here. Uh, Mario Brega was born Florestano Brega in Rome, Italy on March 5th, 1923. He was the son of Primo Brega, 1892 to 1955, who was a carpenter and former Olympic runner. I never knew that till I started uh, looking at his biography. Right. Brega was a butcher before he drifted into acting. That's uh, also Jeff Cameron was supposedly a butcher before he went into acting, according to Simone. Seems Lundell. to be a popular pre-employment. I, I guess so. But anyways. Um, his uh, his heavy physique ensured him a plethora of character roles. Uh, Mario made his debut in film as an actor and character actor using this impo imposing physique and gruff appearance. In the first role, role, he participated in the film La Mascati de Divoli, Blue, in 1947. So he goes back to the 40s. Now, who knew that, Tom, that he, he made his film debut in the late 40s? And we didn't notice him until the mid-60s, almost 20 years later. Uh, he was also sometimes billed as Richard Stuyvesant, and we'll get into that when we go over his films, because it was just in the first few films that he used that pseudonym, and I think there's an answer for that. Um, he gradually rose to cult status with his roles in the Sergio Leone Spaghetti Western movies. He right. was also featured in Federico Fellini films, and later in his career had comical roles with director Carlo Verdone. Brega stood six foot four inches and well over 250 pounds, at his heaviest, I would say closer to 300. Easy. The, yeah, easy. But after the 1960s, slimmed down significantly. It all he appeared in 79 films from 1947 to his last film in 1991 called Crack. Seven, uh, Brega, Tom, 79 films 79 Mario films Brega Brega was in. And about yeah, you would have thought maybe 25 Western. or 30, but 79. That's yeah, done. So less um, than half he, in Spaghetti Westerns. Yeah, there's only like, what, 17, 18 in Spaghetti it's Western. Small, so. To him, a lot of these actors, these old timers that have made 100 films, to them it was just a job. I wish they'd be alive to see the cult status that they've yeah. achieved. You know, yeah. they would just be, it's a different era, of course. But to him I'm it was saying, a blip in his career, but uh, that's what he's known for. Right. So that blip made him an, an international star. And this look. Star. Yeah, and this various, look. Yep. You know, and, and if you wanted, or his his uh, doppelganger, what's his twin, Tom? We always say. Oh, uh, Pedro Sanchez. Uh huh. Who's the and who's the guy? The sidekick in Sabata. Yeah, Pedro Sanchez. Okay, <laughs> duh. Anyway, and then you have Fernando Sancho. It's kind of like an older version of both of them. Uh, you, you know, you can throw in Eduardo Fajardo and uh, and Adolfo Celli, but those are mostly the evil villain. Mm -hmm. They're like the Bond villain of a spaghetti western, but Mario was always like the, the main henchman, the second to the yeah. head bad guy. Yeah, he was the he was the, uh, the the man that they turned over all the beatings to. If they wanted someone roughed up or killed, they turned to Mario Brega, the head villain. Well, which, anyway, and, his, and his best, Tom. We were talking before the show. His best Brega's best, I think, on screen uh, violence, violent breakdown. It's equivalent to Citizen Kane when Charles Foster Kane finds out his wife is leaving and he destroys his room. The beating that Brega gives Tuco. Tuco, yeah. I love that. And it's it's very Sam Peck and Posh, you know, the blood, uh, very wild bunch. That scene itself had a lot of blood. Mm -hmm. um, it was a good beatdown. Oh, I yeah. tell you where he is. <laughs> <laughs> but then, of course, Brega gets his demise later. Um, so anyways, yeah. yeah, Brega died in Rome in the Marconi area where he lived. Uh, where, that's where he lived. He died on July 23rd, 1994 after suffering a heart attack. I tried to find out what type of person he was off screen. And this is the only quote I could find. 
Uh, Julia Petroni, who directed him in Death Rides a Horse, says, Briggs' off-screen personality was almost as unappealing as his on-screen. He was a typical Roman bully, rough and rude and full of himself. But uh, I, I, I sort of dispute that because, I mean, he Just was go, a, Tom, go, go check out YouTube. There's a ton of stuff post-Spaghetti Western career on Mario Brega where he's got gray, white hair. He plays grandfather types. Yep. He did comedies. He did action. He did a, he underrated actor. That's why by episode 27, we decided to do a special to him. Yep. There's, a, there's at least two or three roles in the Westerns where he messes up one of his eyes. You oh, know, yeah, he's got a, he's like got a glass silver. eye, yeah, or a, a, something with his eyes. Even one one of the westerns, he's called One Eye. But right. uh, to to do that, you've got to have some humility to be able to say, "Yeah, do whatever you want to me. I'll you know I'll take the role." But great, he's also in act. every single yeah. Leone film, so Leone must have liked him. That in itself, if he only made three spaghetti westerns and they were Leon, the uh, three Leones, he's still yep. in cult fandom, cult status. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yep. I mean, his roles are fantastic. Of course, the sidekick to uh, Gian Maria Volante. Yep. You know, and of course, the soldier who does the the dirty work of Lee Van Cleef. You know, it's just great roles playing basically himself. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like uh, Paul Smith and uh, Bud Spencer did. Bud Spencer, yeah. I, well, I heard that Brega was a a bodyguard before. Also, <laughs> now he may. Have when I say bodyguard, that's what they may mm -hmm. say. I think he may have been in security for Leone, and that's where Leone used him in his films. I don't know. Right. Well, that's like, you know, go read a frailing uh, thesis, Tom. I'm sure it's all in there. You know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> the Somewhere. five ways of, of, of Mario Brega. But um, I was going to make an analogy how he was Ital the Italian William Conrad. He was the Italian, uh, what was the Conrad's? Huh? Oh, um, Canon. Yeah, he was the Italian Canon, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> what a great analogy. Anyway, let's get moving. We want to welcome all of you here to uh, our special show, our celebration on the films, and it seems like the life and times of Mario Brega. I'm Jay Jennings. That's Tom Betts. And um, we're here every week. We haven't missed an episode since we started. A couple close calls, thanks to some, some blackouts and uh, floods. But other than that, we're, we're fine. We're here in Almeria, Tom. Tom, where are you exactly? What part of town? This is mini Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, Tom's going to give a, a little synopsis and background on the film. We've gone over some of these before. So Tom will maybe do a little tiptoe or skip through that yeah, we'll one. Just, we'll just basically say what the character was that Mario played. Talk about that if we need to. Okay. But I don't think we talked uh, too much, Tom. About his first appearance, I think it's unbilled, uh, Buffalo Bill, Tom? Yeah, Buffalo Bill, hero of the far west, also known as Buffalo Bill, and just Buffalo Bill in, in England, uh, 1964. So this precedes uh, Fistful of Dollars, uh, directed by John W. Fortson, who is Mario Costa. Uh, cinematography by Jack Dalmas, who is Massimo Dalamano, who was the photographer in Fistful of Dollars. So... Some of this carried over into Leoneville. Um, this story is about Colonel William Buffalo Bill Cody, played by Gordon Scott, who's sent to put an end to the dishonest relations between a gang of white swindlers and the Indian Yellowhand, played by Mirko Ellis. He goes to the chief of Yellowhand's tribe, Wise Fox, played by Theodore Chalyapan Jr., and tries to convince him to sign a peace treaty with the federal troops. In order to avoid this, the gun runners abduct Wise Fox's daughter, attempting to put the blame on Colonel Peterson's soldiers. Um, in this movie, Brega plays Big Sam Donaldson. And he's there he billed, is, Tom. Yep, he's billed as Richard Stuyvesant. Why Richard Stuyvesant? Well, this is an Italian West German co-production. So I think they used his name and changed it for tax purposes. Oh, yeah. Because A great name, same though. Thing in, same thing in Fistful, yeah. Anyways, in this one... What he's known for is he gets into a fight in the movie with Gordon Scott. And right. apparently they didn't get along too well off screen. And so the punches started to get real. And, uh, and you can tell, Tom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Degenerates into a real beating from Brega as he re repeatedly struck the American actor with excessive realism. Right. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, this, is, 
Listen, I had a chance to uh, check out, I went through, because I have about 500, I don't know if I've ever mentioned, films, VHS cassettes, Super <laughs> 8, 16, of spaghetti westerns alone. I collect other genres, but I've almost gone bankrupt collecting spaghetti uh, yeah. western stuff. So um, uh, for those, as I said, some who tune in, tune in and they expect the Tom Bet show, I'm, you know, unfortunately, yes, I am Tom's sidekick. <laughs> it's like Batman and Robin <laughs> of Spaghetti Westerns, Tom. Well, Jay, I, I never had to work after Batman. But anyway, <laughs> Tom, um, getting back to, I was going to say, I went out and researched Tom and I have screenshots from my own personal, uh, from my own personal archives. I found photos from almost every film he was in, Tom. So I just, if you want to know what I do behind the scenes, I'm up till two or three in the morning oh, yeah. researching, uploading. This isn't just, I just pop on the mic and go, hi. So anyway, enough about me, Tom. Let's get back to Mario Brega. Okay, um, well, this, is on, this is on VHS. There's not on DVD yet or Blu-ray, which I'm surprised because Gordon Scott's got quite a following since he was an ex-Tarzan, right. uh, but it does not come out on uh, DVD yet. Well, what I find is weird is you find me another actor, Tom, uh, outside of Mario Brega, who was in his first two Spaghetti Westerns, have the words Far West in them. First, yeah. it's Buffalo Bill of the Far West, then it's the Mafia Men of the Far West. What are the odds, Tom? That must have been a selling point for these early Westerns. Is to, Had to, to have been. Put the, put the name West in there some way. But, uh, yeah, this is another 64 uh, Italian-Spanish co-production with our favorite comedy team, Franco Frankie and Chicho Ingracia. Tom, you know I have the complete Chicho. <laughs> yes, so, can keep it. No I can't say, jealous. wait a minute, I, can't, I no don't like Rita. About about that. That. I don't on. like Little Rita. I don't like some of the White Fang movies or the Zorros. We all know that. I, I'm, I'm an old school Peck and Paw-ish, you know, uh, Django, Corbucci, that's my main. Yeah. If it's not in that genre, it becomes secondary to me. But anyway, whatever. That's why I have 500 films, 400 posters, and I got Tom Betts, who's actually locked in a cage next to me. And, you know, I just show spaghetti westerns all night long, and that's how I get him to do the show. Otherwise, uh, he'd have nothing to do with me. That's right. But anyway, Tom, uh, not a good film. I've watched 10 Minutes. Yeah, it's about, it's also called Two Gangsters in the Far West, Two Mafia yeah. Men in the Far West, directed by Giorgio Simonelli. Uh, it's about Indians and outlaws make life difficult for two Sicilian cousins after they inherit a gold mine in Texas. Brega plays one of Fernando Sancho's henchmen. And in the poster, you can see Fernando, Hench, Fernando Sancho, uh, who's the uh, the main henchman, who plays, plays a guy named Rio. But Helene Chanel is also in this, plays a uh, part called named Betty White. And right, I'll Tom, look, look, look at, uh, there he is. Yeah, look at, look at Mario. I mean, his early yeah. roles, he's sans beard. He looks yep. like he could, he could have worked in, uh, in the States. He had that rugged. Oh, yeah. Yep. But he's, a, you know, right, worked in, in Italy, mostly making these Euro films. And uh, yep. they all start somewhere, right? Even though we talked about Lee Van Cleef. And others, even Jeff Cameron, first couple roles, you're not doing much, but that's what gets the uh, the PR people and the the agents. Oh, look, he was in that, or he was in that. But he had a, a nice rugged look. If he never would have grown oh, yeah. a beard, Tom. Oh yeah, yeah he's like a Bud Spencer without the beard. Oh yeah, exactly. And this was so, not available on anything. Thank God. <laughs> thank the Lord. <laughs> anyway, so right away. Uh, Mario got lucky, met Sergio Leone, Leone. Tom will tell us a little brief thing about that. And then he got to make the first of the classic. He's in three, so it's in, he's in a trilogy of, uh, of Leone films, you could say. Every of uh, the great Leone films, Mario Brega pops up as the sidekick or that guy dressed in black with, you know, dusty, filthy, you want a drink? You know, it's like, it's that kind of thing. So he, he filled that role. A lot of other actors tried to, but I think he was the best. Uh, do you know? Remember, he does that slight no, he nods no to Klaus. Yeah. Where Klaus wants to draw his gun on Lee. Yeah, even you know, though before Klaus lighting is, the is a maniac, Mario's got control over him. That's right. And then he often Lee offers, um, was it his cigar or drink to anybody? And, he, and they all walk, three of them, all legendary co featured yeah. players, one after another. <clears throat> and it's just so sinister, and that's why these films are classics, not only because of Clint 
and Lee Van Cleef, but of the side evil characters as well. There's the poster, Tom. Yep. Yeah, so I have this. It's uh, very, it's very expensive. <laughs> Don't ask me why, Tom. Oh, Anything no. over a hundred bucks is expensive. Yep. But th that was a five, five times that at least in mint condition. Sure. So anyway, Tom. So anyways, this is a 64 Italian, Spanish, German film co-production. Uh, remember I told you the cinematographer and this is Jack Dalmas. So that's a carryover from the first Buffalo Bill film. Music is by Dan Savio, who's actually actually Ennio Morricone. And of course, we all know it's about the laconic stranger. Clint Eastwood plays two criminal factions against each other in a border town for his own financial gain. Mario Brega as Richard Stuyvesant again because of this German co-production. Plays Chico, one of Ramon's henchmen who gets knocked cold by no name. Unforgettable, Tom. Skills. Yep. Unforgettable. Well, guarding the Rojo Hacienda. It's on DVD and Blu-ray. That's but, one of my uh, favorite roles of, of, of his. Yeah, Chico. He gets crushed by a barrel. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That seems a lot of times. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, I, mean, I remember, Tom, TV. we were talking about this before, and I kind of remember death scenes and stuff. Oh, yeah. So, no, yeah, really. Uh, I forget who else with him, but he gets crushed. Remember, Clint rolls the barrels? Yep. And then pfft, you don't really throws, see any blood, but you, you understand there, yeah. what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Classic scene. Um, oh, yeah. It put him, but this film is obviously in a top 10. So, to be in and considered a top 10 of all time spaghetti western film, and he's already, he's in three. <laughs> yeah. So, he's going to exactly. be legendary. Yep. And people are going to remember him. So, what are the odds, Tom, that Sergio Leone? But give briefly how they met and how he got how they got along. Well, I don't know how they met. Uh, all I can surmise is that he worked for Leone in some capacity. Like I said, he was a couple places I've read he was a bodyguard. Well, I can't believe Sergio would have a bodyguard, but he might have security around his his uh, house for different reasons because his family was known from way back. So. That's how I would say he probably got to know who Mario was. And we're starting to look for characters to fill in parts on your uh, films. He's a perfect match for the yeah. Chico character, so why not? And he doesn't, have, he doesn't have lines, like you said. He's got nods of the head or little bits and things. He carries the uh, marijuana around for Indio. Right. <laughs> but uh, he hasn't got a lot of lines. Right, and it's av obviously uh, available on blue many Blu-rays, Tom. Yeah, it's on DVD and Blu-ray, okay. yep. So let's move on, uh, Tom Nanino, um, and for a few dollars more, classic, basically almost playing the same character, almost can be his, his long-lost brother or maybe a, a cousin. Yep. That's what's so cool about Mario Brega. I actually wish we would have done an episode on him earlier, but blame me and, and Gertrude, our 80-year-old program director. She's she's Swiss and she grew up watching Spaghetti Western, so she programs all the shows. So she said, she said, <laughs> wait till show twenty seven to do Mario. So I, I listened. Anyway, uh, Tom, what do you have to say, or does anything have to be yeah, said? This is sixty five bounty hunter named Manko, played by Eastwood, and a Southern Colonel Douglas Mortimer, played by Lee Van Cleef, join forces to find an un unstable bank robber named Indio Jean Maria Volante. Uh, Brega plays Nino, the right-hand man of Indio, but is double-crossed when he's no longer needed to carry out the pot-smoking maniac's plan to steal all the money from the robbery of the El Paso Bank. Uh, this one is on DVD and Blu-ray. And like you said, he pl basically plays the same role as he did and for a few dollars more. Right. And I actually can't fault him for that. Nope. It works. And uh, it's one of my favorites. It's in a definite top ten. And the, the hits just keep on coming. He actually appeared in some other good non-Leone uh, movies, Tom. I think one of them I have prepared. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, first he did the trilogy. Then he went off and did other good ones. Yeah, so how about your next film, Tom? The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. <laughs> yeah. This one, we know this one by heart. Um, three rogues go in search of $200,000 of Confederate gold buried in Sad Hill. And Brega plays in... Different, different, I guess, different cuts he's billed as Corporal and Sergeant Wallace. Maybe after the beating, <laughs> leave, leave, give, him a, give him a raise to Sergeant from Corporal. But uh, he plays Wallace, who beats the hell out of Tuco in Betterville Prison Camp, only to get his head bashed in 
uh, and run over by a train when Tuco turns the tables on him later in the film. The right. DVD and Blu-ray. Yep. But he, this well, is probably his most beasty role of his career. He just beats the hell out of Tuco. Yeah, and then Tuco gets the last laugh. Yeah. Um, tossing him off the train and then using him to split his chain from his. And yep. he goes, I can't his go body is then dragged it. underneath. <laughs> the train. This is brutal for that yep. for that time period. No, exactly. Yeah, you're, you're watching this in the theater or when it comes to television. Like, wow. As I said, that's why I got into spaghetti westerns, Tom, because of uh, Peck and Paul, Leone, uh, Sam Fuller, uh, directors who would cut with a cutting edge, Corbucci. Uh, so I grew up. You know, I was a big fan of Universal horror films, Tom. As you know, I watched all the classics on Channel Five movie for a Sunday evening or, uh, you know, movies till dawn. But well, remember uh, in, the, in the good, the bad and the ugly after he gets, he's got uh, Mario Brega up on the railroad tracks and the chain linked across the, uh, the rail, right. Uh, the train comes along and cuts it cause it just made out of lead. But after the first, first take, Sergio said, Eli, raise your head a little bit more. So the camera can see you, and Eli says, "If I'd have raised my head, the step would have de decapitated me on that." Oh, yeah, that's a famous oh, yeah. story. Yeah. Uh, Eli Wallach almost was killed a couple times. That scene, he almost drank acid. He almost drank acid. Yeah, he did actually, and just a split second, he felt it on the tongue. He spit it out with spit minimal out. damage. Tom. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, and Sergio uh, probably no, said, "Just wash your mouth out, and we'll do the second take." Right. <laughs> Anyway, going from a classic, uh, he, as I, the next film after this, he returned to the glory of a gritty spaghetti western. But we all have to appear in the greatest kidnapping in the West, Tom, to, to say yeah, we, we actually existed. we talked about existed. this a couple of times because of George Hilton. Hold on, Tom. And, uh, Overkill. Oh, four Overkill. shows. I think because <laughs> of Hilton and Powers. We haven't done a Wally Barnes show yet, Tom. Yeah, well, but, Jeff Cameron said uh, it, so we talked about him last week, you know. But we've shown this poster, and oh, it's yeah. not one of mine. It's a friend's. Uh, I wouldn't collect this. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> there he is, Tom. The cast is great. The film's so-so. Talk about Brega for a second. Yeah, he plays a character named Andreas, or Yanaro, who is one of Jarrett's henchmen. Jarrett is Walter Barnes, pictured there on the right, who's the leader of a gang, and they hide in, hide in a town after a bank robbery, and the Gang members try and double cross each other, but uh, uh, Jarrett or Jarrett's henchman is a well is Mario Brega. See, Tom, there's a, a rare screenshot I'm talking about. Yep. The lengths that I go to, Tom, sit there, grab it, download it, and my wife's like, "Come to bed already." Yeah. So anyway, another okay role, kind of went backwards from the Leone films. I guess you still got to put food on the table, right, Tom? That's great. Yep. <laughs> but anyway, he returns to glory in one of my favorite gritty uh, under the radar films, Tom. The ugly he was ones. the best in the business. And I'm, as you know, Tom, I'm not a big Tom Million fan. Not, not, yeah. not, of, not because of him. Great yep. films, of course. It's just after he plays the same guy over and over again. We are my women. Yeah, you know, this one's a little bit different, film. but uh, yeah. This but one's about this a bounty one hunter named. He's more, he's grittier. Uh, I enjoy this film immensely, Tom. He's got a little bit more sympathetic character in this one too in the beginning. Then he turns violent in the end. But a bounty hunter named Luke Chilson, played by Richard Wyler, is trailing convicted bandit Jose Gomez, played by Melian, who has been assisted in his escape by a childhood friend, Ella Karin, from his village. Chilson's attempt to take Gomez back into custody is thwarted by the loyalty of the village people, all of whom remember Gomez The finally. village people, Tom. There you go. They can do the YMCA. Right. They believe he has been driven to banditry through injustice and persecution. However, as Gomez's friends descend on the settlement, old friendships are tested and loyalties begin to unravel. It uh, looks like Greg a gun played. smoke episode, Tom. It looks like a... <laughs> He does there. Yeah, he plays a guy named Miguel Cortinas, the village blacksmith. So he's actually a good guy in this one. And this is you know available. What, you know, Tom, DVD you know what I think? Ray. No, hmm. I think this is really taken from a Gunsmoke or Bonanza episode. 
and it was rehashed. No, I'm just kidding. He could he could have taken Dan Blocker's place uh, on the Ponderosa That's true. Tom. That's true. Yep. Anyway, this is based yeah, on a book, yeah. and if you ever read the book, it's pretty close to the film. But I mean, I read the book before I saw the movie, of course. Right. And it got a completely different feel for it because I'm thinking of it as more an American style town and stuff like this, and it's a Spanish village, so. It's still gritty. Um, yep. Kind of has that um, mercenary feel to it, in my opinion. Anyway, let's get on to another classic. You've done three Leone films, or four, and or you know, and then Sergio Cabucci gives you a nice little role in, in the Grand Silence, Tom. Luigi Pistillo uh, show. Yeah, we could do that, Luigi. Yep. Uh, for Mario Brega, Tom. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, he. Uh, Let's see. I think he's. he's that, like, oh yeah. Anyway, uh, in this film, Tom, a minute to pray, a second to die. Uh, I told you this one. <laughs> he falls off a cliff after they play. You know, da 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 da. da, da. Alex Cord shoots to the yep. theme song to America, while uh, Mario tap dances and then he loses his footing. Yep. So uh, remember, Alex Cord plays Cord McCord. That's right. He plays Clay McCord. Uh, a wanted outlaw determined to get the pardon offered by Governor Carter, played by Robert Ryan. He has to make it to town, but must deal with Colby, Arthur Kennedy, the town marshal and a gang of outlaws hanging out in a nearby town, led by Kraut, played by Mario Brega, a trigger-happy outlaw who welcomes those who are wanted by the law. Uh, Brega shines in this one as the outlaw leader. He's pretty good in this one. Well, Tom, we, we discussed this earlier, uh, Robert Ryan and his only Spaghetti Western. Yep. And it, I mean, that is reason alone uh, to enjoy this film, because I like crossovers. People who are in film noir, I'm a big fan of that as well. Not just Spaghetti Westerns, I have a collection of film noir, universal horror classics. But when it comes to those, we, our past guests, like the great director, writer, author, Courtney uh, Joyner, has yep. a huge collection of stuff. That's why court, we always go back and forth. Well, I have this. Well, I have that. Well, you win again, court. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> you know? So, but anyway, let's get to the, uh, before we get to the next film, uh, yeah, this one's on DVD to horse. let's show what, uh, what he looked like in a minute to pray. There you go. A little bit cleaner looking. Right. Kind of. Yeah. Yep. Shaved a little bit. That was more of a, you know, he's not playing that greasy kid stuff. Mexican. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's crowded. But anyway, so he's got to be. Anyway, he's so, got to be a German, so he's he can't wear the the uh, poncho and the uh, sombrero. Right. So let's move on to the our next great uh, Brega uh, featured role, Tom, and that is in Death Rides a Horse. Yep, Death Rides a Horse, sixty-eight Italian. Uh, we talked about this with Mike Malloy because it's one of Lee Van Cleef's best. Right. Uh, it's about Bill Masita, John Philip Law, who as a child witnesses the slaughter of his family. He sets out to track down the outlaws and the clues he remembers from that night. Meanwhile, Ryan, played by Van Cleef, has been released from prison and is on the trail of the same gang, having been robbed and double-crossed by them. What starts out as a rivalry between the two uh, ends up with them linked to get together to uh, defeat the outlaws. Brega plays one eye a member of Walcott's, which is played by Luigi Pistilli's gang. And this one, he plays more of the uh, a role he did in For a Few Dollars More and uh, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. He's a heavy, right. uh, the big, bulky guy. Yeah, let's show them my rare Japanese poster for that, Tom. There you go. Yep, nice one. Not, not cheap. <laughs> on, that. I'm going to tell you something. No, Japanese posters for so many... 400, 4,000 yen. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, They've I'm always like, been expensive on. on everything. LPs, DVDs. Books, right, CDs. for some reason, yep. if it's imported from Japan, it's got to be expensive. That's not a knock on Japan. God love them. they got to make Oh, no, dollar. they do great work, yeah. Fantastic no, work, yeah. In the world of collecting, anything from mm -hmm. Japan is just triple, quadruple what it would yep. be anywhere else. And anywhere else, it's still too expensive. Yep. No, but that's the, we, I'm going to use this, here we go, hide the kids. That's the shit. When you have a Japanese uh, death rides a horse, um, yeah, it took it text took about six or seven weeks to arrive. Oh yeah, yep. So, anyway, Tom, 
Uh, let's move on to Brega's next film. I also want to welcome you here to another thrilling episode of uh, Once Upon a Time in Spaghetti Westerns. That's Tom Betts. I'm Jay Jennings. We do uh, profiles and like podcast documentaries on Spaghetti Western films, actors, directors, locations. Uh, we have a special show coming up. I was going to, I'll just give a little hint. It's going to be finally, Tom, on the, uh, the main family of stunt workers. Right, Tom? What, what's the name of the family? The Tyrone family? Well, Tyrone, yeah. The Jose Tyrone Tyrone. family. All the brothers yep. did stunts. Yeah, you know three, their faces. Three other brothers. Yep. So we're going to do a show coming up soon on the stunt work in the Spaghetti Western. So one by one, as I said, we get hundreds of letters and emails. Tom says, Jay, enough. So let's listen to the, to the people. And then, of course, we have our uh, author show coming up in December. We'll talk more about that as well. This is the celebration of Mario Brega, Tom. Let's continue on with his next Spaghetti Western. Um, it's an Anthony Steffen classic. Yeah, we talked about this one, Infinitum, too, because it's... <laughs> or is that ad nauseum, Tom? <laughs> yeah, Steffen and Berger in this one, and they, uh, they're opposites. But anyways, Brega plays dirt, a guy named Dirty, who's a gang leader in this I'm one. I'm Dirty. Uh, dirty, and it's on DVD, so... so that's the, that's actually, Tom... You. I have this, that's my poster, that's the video poster when it first came out on uh, a vid DVD, I think. Oh, anyways, from a, a couple of video stores went on a business here in the 80s and 90s, and I would be in my car um, driving around town, and I'd see they're closing up shop because DVDs are coming or whatever. Maybe this was the late 1990s. Yeah, yeah. Uh, video Station, Video Hollywood or Hollywood Video, uh, you name it, uh, Hollywood Collectibles, uh, all these different you know, they went out of biz. And yep. before they, they did, I went there and I, I would make offers. Okay, I'll take those four photo boosters, that uh, lobby card, and these stills. And, oh, I'll take this 8 millimeter castle print of Django uh, <laughs> with me. So, and that's, so posters like this remind me of another time. Remember, yep. we always talk about posters and stuff here on this show, Tom. Uh, so forgive me if I add one of my personal favorites while we're doing something else. Now let's get to a Robert Woods classic, Tom, that Brega happened to be in. That's El Puro. El Puro. This is one of uh, Robert's best and most asked for. Uh, and that's another rare, films. rare poster, Tom. Poster, yep. <laughs> 69. Um, some of the highlights in this one, music is by Alessandro Alessandroni. And this is about an alcoholic gunman named Joe El Puro Bishop. Played is being hunted by five bounty hunters led by a psychopath named Gypsy Boots, played by Maurizio Fiorini as Ashbourne Hamilton Jr. Um, El Puro is Robert Woods, who's sheltered by a saloon dancer named Rosie, played by Rosalba Neri. When his enemies kill her, El Puro pulls himself together and faces his adversaries and takes his revenge in a final showdown. So among the outlaws coming to get him are on El Puro's track, is a, guy, is a guy named Tim, played by Mario Brega, uh, he's, who's a repulsive bounty hunter who rapes a girl and strangles her grandfather to death. Now, Tom, who's, who's, in this one. Tom, whose definition is repulsive? Is that yours or what the review uh, says? That's the review, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is repulsive in a, in a little is, bit of a yep. way, Tom. And this one's on DVD. Awesome, as it should be. So anyway, Tom... Uh, any hint uh, to what your autograph is going to be without telling us? No. <laughs> I won't tell you. Well, I has, can give a hint. It has about nothing mine. to do with, with Mario Brega. It has nothing to do with uh, the films we're going to discuss. So that's a hint. Oh, okay. Is it from your book of from yeah, the Woodland the Hills Actors Home? It's in the book. Okay. See, this is like, uh, what is it? I've Got a Secret, Tom, or uh, what's that other one? With hosted by to, by um to tell by Blyden, Larry Blyden. Which one oh, is Larry that? Blyden. That was sorry. that was Betty White's husband, right? No, that's Alan Ludden. Tom. Alan Ludden. That's right. I'm sorry. Larry I don't Blyden know. was an actor. I don't. To tell the yeah. truth, what's my line, Tom? It's my line. Da -da -da -da. You, you won't. You'll have to wait and da -da -da. see. That. Well, Tom Betts, please sign in. Oops, we just gave away who it was. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway. 
He moved after. Oh, here we have a shot from El Puro. Not not remember. Look at this. Clean. It looks like uh, yeah. Pavarotti. Tom. He doesn't look. He doesn't look repulsive there, does he? <laughs> no, not at all. Not he's at all. he's more yeah. Paul Smithish in this one, Tom. Yeah, there you go. Yep. But no, he gets clean shape, a completely different look. You know, I discovered that myself when I watched some of these other ones. Uh, gets clean shave. It doesn't matter if he's a repulsive rapist or not, Tom. Yep. The, the way he looks, he'll go from that dingy, you know, oily character to someone like this. He, you know, it's just, it's amazing. <laughs> I but know. he's more remembered. If he just did these roles, don't know if he'd have the cult status. No, I don't think so. The, you know, yeah, just another guy with a beard. Yep. So, yeah, anyway, Pavarotti uh, and him could have been brothers in that shot. But anyway, he made another uh, uh, film back in the genre with Anthony Stephan. Looks like they worked a couple times, Tom. Yeah, this looks like, a, you know, you, these get confused because, you, again, you got Berger, Berger and uh, Stephan. And uh, this is uh, No Room to Die, Hanging for Django, News for Django, 69 Italian, directed by Sergio Gironi. Uh, this one is about two bounty hunters, Johnny Brandon, played by Anthony Steffen, and Everett Bible Murdoch, played by William Berger, team up to face a crime ring smuggling Mexicans across the border to treat them as slaves. This one's a little bit weird because Brega plays the partner or sidekick of Steffen, but I've watched this several times. He's never called by a name, so the character that he's he gets billed on is just blank. He's never he just called Steffen's partner. <laughs> or something like that. I mean, he's got no, what would that mean? No today, one ever calls Tom? him, "Hey Joe," or or "Fatty," or whatever. Hey Joe. Yeah, yeah that'd be a good one. That's crazy. Yeah, so, I mean, he's like the third builder, but he has no character name. It's he's crazy. a little bit more sleazier in this, at least looking wise, in this film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Now that kind of that looks look like more he been, right. He looks like he could have been the rapist here. They should have switched him. Yeah, <laughs> or a detective on U.S. television. Tom. Yeah, yeah, Texas Ranger. So, as I said, great look. That's what keeps you working in the business, Tom, when you have a great look. And as he made, what, 70-plus films. We know him for about 17 Spaghetti Westerns. That's it. Uh, uh, you know, Mario, one of my favorites. So it, if we're doing a show on Brega, it's obviously we'll be doing one on Aldo Sambrell. And, uh, yeah, we, Jay and I decided we're going to try and do the uh, Leone Stock, the actor stock company. The Leone Stock Company shows, Tom. <laughs> And I'm sure all of you will be pleased about that. There's about 27 of them. Yeah, there is. So, yeah. so that's up. we'll be up to show 54 before we get away from it. But anyway, let's move on, Tom, uh, to the next film in the over of, uh, of Mario Brega, Finders Keepers. It's not bad. No, I actually like this, the poster. <laughs> no, this one, this, this one goes downhill as far as, far as I'm concerned. It's almost like it's piecemeal together like they made but it the while they went along. the posters is incredible, Tom. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, okay, I take it, I take it back. My, uh, there, there is something related to my uh, autograph in this episode here. Okay, we won't mention it. Anyway, right. 1971 Italian, directed by Gianni Crea. Uh, it's about Jack Forrest, played by Donald O'Brien, an unlucky, unlikely hero whom, along with the help of a stranger who turns out to be his long- lost brother at the end, Chris Forrest, played by Gordon Mitchell, seeks revenge for the murder of their parents. They meet up with a crazy outlaw named Dexter, played by Dino Strano, who against his will tells them about a fortune in gold. There's another uh, show, Tom, Dino Strano. Dino Strano, yeah, another Fadani stock player. Um, Brega plays Parker or Grendel, a businessman in the local town and one of three men behind the murder of Mr. Forrest. Uh, this one's on DVD and video, but this one's a pretty cheaply made film. I don't know if it was piecemeal <laughs> or or what, but it doesn't make much sense to me. Once again, um, Brega could be in an episode of Bonanza in this one, Tom. Yep, and plays a sleazy businessman. Or he, or he's the the the, the dealer at the. Uh, I was gonna say he looks like a Tom. dealer there. Yeah, owner of a saloon. <laughs> yep. You know, but when you get older, you got to take some of these roles, Tom, as we as we both know. So anyway, um, we want to welcome you, everybody, once again to another thrilling episode of Once Upon a Time in Spaghetti Westerns, the podcast. The great Tom Betts dedicates his week, grabs his favorite ale, and I grab a cup of a cup of Joe, and we bring the show to you from the vaults 
uh, of the Western Zolitaliana. So literally, right, Tom? Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll get to the vault in a little while. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's coming up. So anyway, moving on, Tom, uh, Brega continued to work. He actually made lots of films after his Spaghetti Western days, throughout the mid to late 70s, 80s. It looked like my, an episode of, of, like, I was watching a few, like Miami Vice. Like, he's the heavy, yeah. uh, hey, you guys go get that guy. And, uh, but in Italian. Mafia and movies, yep. A lot of TV movies, but he, at least he kept working, um, which is great. But we're just going to keep to the spaghetti westerns here because those are the ones that are <laughs> the most interesting and the, one that he, the ones that he's actually most known for. He actually appeared in his fourth Leone film, Tom, My Name is Nobody. Yeah, like I said, his career is starting to go downhill, but all of a sudden Leone's going to make a movie, so he's in it. And uh, this one is My Name is Nobody. 72 Italian, French, West German, directed by Sergio and Tonino Val Valerie. I mean, basically it's Tonino's film, but Sergio was involved in it. That's about Jack Beauregard, Henry Fonda, an aging gunfighter on his way back to France, the country of his origin. On his way, he tries to clear the death of his brother when he meets a nobody, played by Terence Hill, who wants to become a somebody by pushing Beauregard into a last Sensational gunfight with the Wild Bunch to give him legendary status. Brega plays Pedro, a bandit, in just a cameo role. <laughs> wow. Got a, got speed First of all, he's got a, yeah, he, he's, he's looking at a light, Tom, he's looking at a, he's looking at a light that needs a scrim or a, or some sort of diffusion. You I know gotcha. what I mean? Like this wasn't part of the scene. They were actually lighting yeah. him. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. He's squinting a bit. Yep. It is a cameo. It's a glorified. You go, oh, cool. There's Mario Brega. Um, you know, but as I said, that puts him in legendary status with those. Um, you, notice, with those you notice how his beard is getting more gray now as he's getting older. Right. Well, and Tom, four. coming up next is, you know, one of my favorite titles. Oh, of here all we go. Time. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a clunker. Seven Devils this, on Tom yeah. Betts' back, which I. This, this is probably his worst role in one of the worst films made. Another Seven Devils on Horseback. Tom, another video store poster. I mean, how yep. cool is that? The there artwork is ten times better than the movie. <laughs> Looks like a dime, dime novel cover. They are uh, all stolen, but, Tom, from those dime novels. That's it. Played by, uh, directed by Johnny Crea. Uh, this one is about in the town of Stanton. Jeff Mitchell or McNeil. Played by Dean Stratford, our buddy Dino Strano again. Love Dino. <laughs> Sister has been killed by the Cooper gang, led by Gordon Mitchell, uh, and his partner Tornado, played by Brega. Right. Seeks and gets his revenge. Made in 1972, but wasn't released until 75. Wonder why. I'm surprised why, it was released at all. <laughs> Thrown together with, foot, with footage from Richard Harrison's Deadly Trackers, it's totally boring and terribly active. Bottom of the barrel and probably Brega's worst performance I've got. This is only I actually kind of dug him in his jammies with a with a derby, <laughs> Tom. With a derby, yeah. <laughs> you can't beat. I mean, that's the whole point of the movie. So we're talking about it now. Mm, terrible. Yeah, just terrible. But I love the title, of course. Yeah. Seven devils on horseback. Seven hunchbacks for Timothy. That whole <laughs> seven, Tom. Seven, yeah. Seven, seven, seven. Right. <laughs> Dial seven seven seven. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it's it's the Nadir of, of it's, it's it's his God's Gun. Um, oh yeah, yeah, basically. But I know that we have fans of God's Gun. It's my favorite bad film. You know, like Plan Nine from Outer Space. So bad is good. Yeah, uh -huh. right. you have to watch it. Yep. Right. To, to even convince yourself you're still watching it. Anyway, he his last spaghetti western. Tom, you do it a service by just calling it a genius. And then leaving it that, uh, you know, you have to finish it. A genius, two idiots, okay. and a moron, Tom. Yep. Or a genius, two partners, and a dupe. <laughs> <laughs> this was, yeah, this was a remake of, of My Name is Nobody or a sequel, whatever you want to call it. Same character Terrence Hill plays. This one's about Joe Thanks, played by Terrence Hill, a con man, swindler, and quick draw gunman. Wanders into a dusty town after a busting card shop, sharp doc. Foster, played by Kinski. That's easy, that, that's easy for you to say, shootout. Tom. That's the part, best part of the whole movie is the beginning and the shootout. Right. Uh, Joe reconnects with his old friend, Steam Engine Bill, 
Robert Charleboy, who is traveling with his beautiful but dizzy-headed girlfriend, Lucy, played by Mew Mew. You know Joe what? Mew Mew, Mew Mew is, is, yeah, she was hot back in the day. Yeah, that was, yep, she was the one. <laughs> Joe has learned that an officer in the U.S. Cavalry is escorting a $300,000 fortune that's been earmarked for Indian relief efforts. However, the commanding officer of the local fort, played by, I mean, Major Cabot, played by Patrick McGowan, has no intention of actually delivering the cash. So Joe hatches the scheme to take it for himself. And Brega has the big role of playing Crutchner, an officer at the Major's, Major Cabot's fort. So he's almost a cameo. Right. And a good cameo it is, Tom. I guess. <laughs> Anything he's in, I'm a fan of. Even he's if he was dressed in, a in an army, army outfit, so you have to sort of watch for him. Right. Real quick, you blink, you'll miss him. But, this is on um, DVD and Blu-ray. But if you're a completist like I am, like Tom is, you'll get the LP. Right, Tom? Well, remember, Jay, this is the one that supposedly they lost the last third of the film. And they had, a re they had to finish it by taking retakes that they had kept because Leone used to do tons and tons of takes. So they had uh, retakes that they used and pieced together to finish the film out. So it's a mess. Right, and probably a good thing to end on, unless anything good. By that time, the spaghetti westerns were fizzling out anyway, yeah, waiting, for, yeah. waiting for coming at you to come out. Yeah. And um, anyway, all inside jokes. I hope my humor, somebody gets something out there, because I have a little laugh inside, and I see sometimes Tom move his shoulder. So I know something <laughs> I, that I get through. I, Tom, you okay? Got to take a, oh, we take a sip of the ale. Love it. Hope it's 100 proof, Tom. Yeah. But anyway, that is our big uh, celebration to the one and only Mario Brega, a well-deserved compilation of his Spaghetti Western films and movies, same thing. And yep. he made a ton of other stuff too, but we know him for those 17 or so Spaghetti Westerns. Four Leone classics, two Carbucci's, Tom, or one? I think just the one. Okay. Well, anyway. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The first one was, yeah, the first one was a Carbucci. Didn't want to make you think, two, Tom. Two Carbucci's, two Carbucci's. Two Carbucci's are better than two one, Tom. Carbucci's and, a, and five Leone's. And, okay. a, and a, right, and, and a caboose. <laughs> but anyway, so we, we love celebrating that, and we're going to be doing that with other great stars in, in episodes to come. Uh, the stock company of the Leone films is a great idea. Then we'll do um, the, <laughs> then we'll do the underground films of Miles Deem, Tom. Oh, God, no. Right. Did we already do a, 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 a we no, did a festival we, on we're, him? We're, we're waiting for Simone Blondell to finish her English courses so we can Wait bring minute, her Tom. on. Is my brain so far gone? I thought we did a F Fidani film fest. We did, we did not. a Fidani. Not really. We, could, we did one of him as underrated directors, but not a... But we didn't do all his films? No. No, no, no not all of them. I think because we've covered all of his bad movies... Jeff Cameron and Kinski, shows, we've covered them, yes. It yes. feels like we've done a Fidani <laughs> a, a couple of times, podcast. yeah. A couple of Forget times, it. yeah. He's already dominated like four or five, <laughs> six shows already. Yeah. Anyway, before I run out of breath with that, no, I'm kidding. We might do a Fidani Film Festival. You, you haven't lived... So that's what these podcasts are, folks. They're premieres, they're film festivals, they're retrospectives of spaghetti westerns of the past. And that's why we have so many fans and followers all over the world, Tom, because of you, Tom. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tom She's Betts. Me. Right. I get a few from some old ladies who want to meet me on the side, but I say sorry, and I pass it over to Tom. So Tom Tom's the, is the swing and sing. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, right. You ever see The Apartment, Tom? Yeah, I saw it a long There's time a ago. Apartment, yeah. Uh, wasn't Brando supposed to be in that? He dropped out or something? Probably. Yeah. Once he saw the script, he dropped out, yeah. Right. I got to work for Ilya Kazan again. <laughs> so anyway, I only mentioned that because I was looking through my autographs and noticed, you know, Brando, even though he wasn't in a spaghetti western, he made a few cool westerns. My favorite... Um, Tom, One-Eyed Jacks? Appaloosa. Oh, of course. Yeah, with the, with the <laughs> scorpions dangling. What are you going to do with that John scorpion? Saxon, you can't beat that. No. Right, I'll but take I John like Saxon over Carl Because I have Walden a bunch of these behind the scene. Brando, it's his only directed yeah. you know, Western, whatever. And there's always turbulence on the set. And I, I have all these behind the scenes. He's looking through the viewfinder. Okay, I need you to put a 50 here. 
<laughs> and I just love behind the scenes, so it takes more of a meaning. So One Eye Jacks, you could even well, say the Missouri Missouri Breaks is even better. The movie behind you, Hills Run Red, was a takeoff on One Eye Jacks. Right. Yeah. So, but anyway, my point is, I was looking through my autographs the other day, forgot that I had Brando. Uh, you, he never did press junkets. I'll talk about that another day. But he's doing a press junket for that movie where he was playing himself with Matthew Broderick. And he has mm. to take an alligator somewhere for him. Mm. I can't remember yep. the name of it. I maybe watched it once where Brando's taking a doing a takeoff on himself. You know, I think, I don't know what year it was, 87, 88, 90. Yeah, he was doing a press junket in L.A., which he would never do for a Godfather or any of that. I'm here for the Matthew Broderick movie. So <laughs> anyway, I didn't get to go, but a friend did. Yeah. You know, and whether I always give my friends a little something underneath, you know, for, for doing it for me, they wait in line, they do the thing, if I couldn't make it, and he got, the, got him to sign like some piece of paper. So this was how back do you know in, that, How do you know your friend didn't sign it? Right. No, because it was legit. <laughs> just, just, Plus, it's a long time friend. It was you, Tom. You oh, got me, Marlon Brando. That was, but that anyway, was very Brando I got. That was the, right. But that's not my autograph of the day. Just a tease of what I have in my archives, Tom. Sometimes All you right. flip through. There's a Tony Masante from The Mercenary. You flip through again. There's Peter Graves from uh, Five Man Army holding a gun. Uh, so I have some a lot of cool stuff. Maybe we'll do another autograph show. But anyway, thank you for watching The Brago Show. The Brago Show. His, his daughter is, is on Facebook, Tom. I don't, I've never checked in with her daughter, with his daughter. <clears throat> really? No, I didn't know I just that. thought about that. Gosh darn it, she could have been huh. here in a third box, Tom. Yep. But uh, I don't think she speaks English. No, in my research, I think I found his daughter, but huh, I could okay. be wrong. But it's not as lucky as you. You found the 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 daughter and the the sons of the the of the Tehran family. Tehran, I got a son and uh, cousin. Right, that's so cool. Going back and forth, trying to get you photos for the big show, talking about the stunt work in spaghetti westerns. I look forward to that. Anyway. Uh, once and once and uh, again, I'd like to welcome all of you for watching. It's now time for part two of every show after we do a special on somebody or a film or a bunch of films. That's when we get into different segments. Book of the week, autograph of the week, or the week album of the week, the weekly news from the WAI vault. And uh, who knows, we might keep adding. We might have fan of the week. So if you make enough <laughs> comments oh, and contribute... Please. Oh, God, now it'll go from 100 to 300 comments, there we go. right? Tim Ferrani will be back on again. Correct. Right, just to debrate you. You guys were kind of like, um, <laughs> uh, what was that comedy team? You know what I mean? Huh? Yeah, huh? Yeah, Schreiber and uh, Jack <laughs> Burns. Burns and Schreiber, yeah. Burns and Schreiber. Burns that was, and that was Schreiber, say, yeah. You and Ferranti remind me of that. Know what I mean? Huh? Yeah, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Tom, <laughs> let's start with Book of the Week. And uh, I can go first. Okay. And yeah, dun, 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 dun. I got to get some music for that. I know it's a cheap show. Book of the Week, Tom. And what do I have as Book of the Week? Let's see what we got. It's a very, it's an under, it's, it's not available. You had to pick it up. I have the PDF. It's a great book, Tom, on Italian Westerns, Tom. Do you know which one it is? I have no idea. Okay, it's kind of an underground magazine, but it's got some great info and insight, Tom. Have you read? Uh, oh yeah, I've got that. Stephen Hooves. I've book? got the book. I've got the book. Sure. Stephen. It's Stephen. a fun read. It's, it's it is all fantastic. Basically, yeah, it's basically all the films you know of. They're not any, you know, unknown films or small ones, but it's a great read. Yeah, I like that. And it's it's kind of like the Spaghetti Westerns Bible that you had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's it could be a, a lot of it is available as a PDF, or if you were lucky enough to get the the soft cover off Amazon 10, 15 years ago. These are these underground ones that don't get a lot of recognition. Yep, um, and they're not around for like one year, and then they're gone. Right. Anyway, great book. If you can find it, I'm sure it's available on any online, either Google or Amazon. Download it. I don't get a dime, although I should. Anyway, Tom, what's your what's your book? What is Tom? Staying with our subject. What? Mario Brega. The life and times of. Yeah, it's uh, by Ezio Cardarelli and by Show it again, Ed Tom. Estel. That's easy for you to say, Tom. Oh, keep, there you go. By it looks like Sean Connery. Put it short again, Tom. Yeah, it's... Hello, Jay. Hi, Tom. 
It came out in 2018. It's, it's Italian. Italian it's in Italian. And it's got, pictures. got pictures. It's, it's a biography of him. I can't read a book without pictures. Let me see if I got some in the center. <laughs> got to be one or two. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know, for us daft people who want to just look at the pictures. I'm just kidding, folks. I read everything, even 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 Sir Frailing stuff. Yep. Um, I always try and pick these up, uh, biographies and stuff, no matter what language they're in, because they start mentioning the films in the back, and they the, the, the Italian title we know. So it's, listen, it's not like you're reading. Tom, Martin Ulrich Buckner, something. our good friend. Yep. His great freaking book, which to me is oh, yeah. the Bible. Anybody who disputes it, you don't know what you're talking about. Yep. Um, Second is any any gun can play. Those two books, you don't need any other book, but you're not going to find Ulrich's book here in the states. It's in German. It doesn't matter. Somehow it translates when you read it and look at the pages and and the photos and the posters. It magically translates into yeah, English. Yeah, you, know, you, you, you know what he's talking about. Yeah, it's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I don't want to give. You know, I'd love. I'll give, be plugging other authors too. So don't get me wrong. I'm not just picking and choosing, but. The first two books that come to mind since we're doing Book of the Week, and it's an extra long segment, is Ulrich Bruckner's <laughs> book, uh, Once Upon a Corpse or Two Shadows on a Corpse's Forehead. What's it called, Tom? He's going to kill us for, for not knowing it. I, I don't have don't a Don't bet on a dead a corpse. corpse. Anyway, it was a play on, it's just the Spaghetti Western Bible, yep. basically. It's the Bible of all Bibles, and then any gun can play. And then, of course, anything else by any of our other friends and authors. But if I were to be on an island, I'd keep those two. S stupid five-minute plug for those two items, but what the hell. Anyway, Tom, let's move to album of the week. It's something I usually don't partake in because that's your department. What do we have? I got one. Who is that, Blue Tom? Gang? Blue Gang. Is it cool in the gang? Well, show it again, <laughs> Tom. Blue Gang. I'm your boogeyman. Hey, Tom, I can, we can't see it. Oh, okay. There you go. All right, good enough. It's by Tony it Rennes. About, this is, is a disco uh, funk, or what is the it? Only, the only person in this that you know, I think Tina Amant's in it, and Jack Palance. Uh, 1973, composer is Tony Rennes. It's on Numero Uno, which is an Italian label. ZSLN 55654. It only has eight tracks of music. Which is, I mean, that's eight. I, I, yeah, I bet you still side. cost you seven ninety nine, Tom, in the import that's, section. It took me a long time to get that one, Jay, and I checked the value on it. It goes anywhere from seven bucks to twenty four bucks today. It's like I thought it'd be worth a hundred bucks. It's rare. You never can but, tell sometimes. Yeah, I've, had, I've had people offer to buy my poster collection, Tom. You know, all at once, astronomical numbers. I've been tempted. Be a nice move to a new neighborhood. But you just can't do it. it. Has no. Oh, you live once. Do it. Don't think so. You, do you these, find do you these find, posters, let's say, Tom? Let's say that poster behind you you bought for 150 bucks. Luckily, do it was much find, less. But okay. Well, I know. But let's say 150 bucks. And let's say you really like that and had a dig to get that poster. And the most that anybody will offer you is 50 bucks. Yeah, you got some piece of trash like God's gun that you picked up, you know, at, at, from from one of your deals at the at the video store for five dollars, and they say, "Oh my God, I'll take that one for one hundred and fifty. Like, yeah. what the hell? But it's it's Tom. you know, one man's treasure, another man's garbage. No, but I I know the market. When you're a collector, you kind of know the market. Like you know, original anything, Leone posters, one sheets, four sheets in great condition are going to be three, four, or five hundred bucks, and then everything else. Would be between fifty and seventy-five. Oh and yeah, you might, right. And then there's that middle ground but, between one and three hundred. And then guess, there's the if you're I guess really what I'm wealthy. Saying, I'm saying, Jay, is you know what the value on these things are, but right. you got some idiot out there that only collects Chich Franco and Chichio. Well, so that's says, I don't fine. Care about that. I don't care. You it's Franco not circles. Chichio? Yeah, it's not circles. We're going to be running in. <laughs> yeah, I'll go good for you and yeah, good luck with right, you. Right. But uh, no, believe it or not. Um, not just Spaghetti Western posters, but all posters, uh, Tom, as we're on the subject of posters. This one cost me five bucks or five euro because mm -hmm. uh, it's all – you can't see it, but it's got tears and rips. Yeah. But I'm going to be keeping this here because it's my ode and homage to the great Henry Silva. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, uh, no, you'll be surprised if you go on eBay or through estate sales. 
They want to get rid of 40, 50. They'll say, just come get it. It's a bargain. And you basically pay 35, 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. and you don't know what you get till you get home and you open, you get, this is it. You unopen it up and there's, um, you know, whatever adios gringo folded. There's that folded. There's a, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a, a prepare a coffin folded. Some are in great condition, some are not. It doesn't matter. You just roll it up, pay the guy, yeah. and leave. Yeah. Uh, right. I mean, you just don't ask questions. A lot of people haggle. They lose out on deals. I'd, I'd be good on Shark Tank, Tom. I'd give, you know, make an offer, take it or leave it. Sure. But well, anyway, it, it's, a, it's a dying breed, Tom, because you can't find these. Even though that was a $5 poster, you can't find that, oh, <laughs> that no. anywhere. I know. So anyway, just a little side dish on posters. Okay, Tom, it's time for autograph of the week, and I'll let you go first, and then I'll do my big, uh, big uh, surprise. There's the Woodland Hills Actors Home Book of Autographs. Is that Chad Everett, Tom? No. How about oh. how about Gordon Mitchell? Gordon Mitchell, and who's that above, Tom? Above him is Milion? Tomas Melian. Unsigned. Unsigned. Tom, never, you never met him. You're drinking buddies. Uh, he was in Miami, remember? I'm in the West Coast. Tom, so that's not what you told me. You met him? Across. No. Didn't know anybody oh, who didn't know him. Just, until just kidding. After he died. No, of course, right. So that's a good autograph, Tom. Who was the one below it? That wasn't Chad Everett? No. That was, if that's side by side, that's uh, Gordon Mitchell. <laughs> Okay, Tom. Anyway, here's my autograph of the week, folks. Uh, I don't know. I've met Orson Welles a few times near the end of his death. I'll say two times. One, at, at the, he was coming out from his last appearance on the Merv Griffin show. Uh, Hi, Mr. Welles. Nice to meet you. All right. And then, you know, that was it. He walked in. But uh, a few years earlier than that, they had a, a press junket for him. And uh, I have eight Orson Welles autographs. Two I got in person. And uh, the other seven, one was from Oya Kodar, who uh, was his, you know, soulmate or wife at the end. She's still alive. And the other six were at, I think, an auction or a state sale by someone who specializes in wells. But mm -hmm. anyway, no, I collect Orson Wells like a, like a maniac. Not anymore, but I did in my early days. Um, I have what, 100 books on them, all first edition hardcovers. <laughs> so it's an obsession. So Orson has cost me a lot of a lot of money, but anyway, my autograph of the of the week, Tom, is where is it, Tom? Do 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 do. It has to be one of them. Has to be from Tepepa, Tom. So yeah, there you go. Cool. Right on the set. I love candids that show with the script, and they're sitting in the director's chair or their own chair. There's Milian, the director of the film, Tom. What's his name? The <laughs> That's great, Giuseppe. Petroni? Uh, is it Petroni? Anyway, he's on. He's off to the right because I have yeah. another photo where three of them are included. I just couldn't fit him in into the audience. Did, did you know Orson well enough that he gave you a cigar? No, I wasn't yeah. even close to that. I wanted <laughs> to be on that. I, I wanted to tell him. He just as he got in his limo and left. I said, "I'm like Gary Graver. I, I also make short films with it, my own camera. Let's work." <laughs> <laughs> as he as he took off in his limo, <laughs> so as you know. Gary Graver, his photographer and cameraman many years, that's how he got to, you know, Graver was making adult films, but he loved Orson Welles. So he called him up at his home, got his number, and he, I'm, since you have the balls to call me, we'll, we'll work together. I, oh, I was right. killed for that. Yeah. That's yep. what I do anyway. Instead, I get hung up on or I get the police at my door, Tom. <laughs> you know, but anyway, that's my autograph of the week, Tom Orson Welles from the Tepepa set. Yep. I see you didn't get Melian either, so we're equal on there. He's he's a tough one. That will have to be from an estate sale, Tom. Mm -hmm. That's one of the few I don't have. Uh, believe it or not, one of the few I don't have. Um, I have every almost everybody else you could think of, but there's a couple thrown in uh, that I don't have yet. But I will get it because I have my people. Gertrude keeps her eye out for estate sales and lets me know. Okay, Tom, uh, is it time for From the WAI Vault? Are we going to do that? Are we going to do the weekly news first? Oh, weekly news is always last, Tom. Okay. Um, I thought what we would do is um, I'll show you people how Tim and I used to put an episode together 
and how we collected material in the olden days. Okay. All right. Jay, you'll, you'll appreciate this because this is probably how you collected stuff too, is we just got a folder, manila folder, put the title of a film up here or an actor, and we started going to the library and collecting stuff, try to get a copy of the... That is so cool. And then we would start stuff like the, the uh, this is like the music who did it. And we'd come up with uh, all kinds of stuff off the internet. If this is the internet now, this kind of stuff, websites, but uh, copies from Italian books. Right. And you'd have to go to the library and make copies. That was the only that, place to, Tom, the library, you'd have to sift through with your fingers through all the little cabinets. Or that microfish on those uh, machine and, you know, look for crap on there. you have to scan and turn the there. wheel. Oh, there's, a, oh, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a picture. And then we put it all together like that. And, and, so uh, you didn't have a printer? You, how did you do that? Typewriter. No, and but how did like, you make the, where did you go? You go to a, well, they didn't have Kinko's back then, so what did, no, how did you had, do it? We would have a typewriter. And then, like I said, when, uh. I went to Tim's wedding. He had a, he had a brother word processor, so we, I went and bought one just like his, so we were able to exchange disks and print it off of there. But I would get people that would send me copies of German TV guides. T Tom, uh, this is pre-cutting and pasting. This is oh, what yeah, you did. This is what you did in, did in school, Tom, for, for yep. school projects. So you I took some crazy glue, you put it on the back, and that's how you made your print. Tom, and we would just you do what's, it, what works. Keep it simple. And that's how it started, the great WAI these magazine. Are, these are press books. We would, here we go, Jay. German video cover someone would send me, you know. This is when you couldn't see this stuff. You'd be like, holy yep. crap. French. Another press book cover. Here's little stuff. That is so awesome, Tom. Then, then we would get, if we were lucky, we would go to like Eddie Brent's or Larry. Eddie Edgar. Brent's is a, out here in the valley. The first place to Eddie Brent and his son, they had like a, almost a 40, 50 year video store. Oh, yeah. And that was easy. Right. Anyway, they've been there for years. When you want, all the studios would go to them for clips. And they, I think they tried to transfer their stuff. It's cheap plug for Eddie Brent's, but probably the king of all Southern California video stores. And what's we that, We got Tom? lucky someone would send you. This is a Boot Hill, again, Italian. Well, look what I have. Now, you asked me one time about Belgian posters. Which are great. There's the Belgian poster for Boot Hill. Nice, Tom. I can tell that's and an as original. You can see, <laughs> as you can see, like you said, these were stuck up in the lobby. So it would have writing on there from the Tom. If it, if it isn't wrinkled and ruined, it ain't it ain't original, Tom. <laughs> All spaghetti western posters were hung by pins and in frames, taken down, hauled to the next town. You're lucky that you can even get one in pristine, in oh, pristine yeah. shape. Yeah, those anyway. are the ones that Gary Dorr sent me. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll grab one of these folders every week, and we'll go through and see what we can find in there. Awesome. Of, of some interest to people. So is that a regular segment you want to do, Tom, or is that just sure, a one-time? Sure, huh? we can just show different stuff. Pick, I mean, pick an I, issue, Tom. I'll show you. I'll show you my posters, which are nothing like your posters. I'll show you my posters if you show me yours. <laughs> exactly. Sounds like a Groucho yeah. Marx line. There we go. But anyway, um, here we are uh, near the tail end of our uh, episode twenty-seven. Episode twenty-eight next week will be on the stunt company of the Leone Films. Hermanos Tarone. Ramon <laughs> So be sure to catch that. And then in upcoming weeks, we have a special author show with two authors, which I guess we can probably talk about next week or something like that. Yeah, we um, don't want to jinx it because we talked about Mike Malloy for so long and then he had to cancel. Every time you mention an author, <laughs> something happens, a fa yeah, right? right? Right. A feat from God. Yeah. But anyway, so Tom, let's get to our one of most of everybody's favorite segment. It's the weekly news. Oh, remember? Are you drunk again, Tom? All right. We got a bunch of odds and ends this week. There's a new German Blu-ray release out called Die Halle von Manitoba, which we know is a place called Glory, 
1965. Of course it is, Tom. Now you're gonna love this one, Jay. You know what? You know what I'm talking about? Place called Glory. Not not on down on okay. Sixth and okay. 109th Street. All right. It's directed by Sheldon Reynolds, who's a American TV director. It stars Lex Barker, Pierre Brice, Gerard Tishy, Mariana Koch. It's on the PDAX label, P-I-D-A-X, number 974-2751, region B. It's in German only, Adobe Digital 2.0, no subtitles. So this is only for German speakers. Now, running time of 93 minutes and was released today, November 20th. I'll show you, show you the cover in a second. The second thing we want to talk about is there's a new British vinyl LP released. Uh, called Loressa de Conte, which we know as The Big Gun Down, 1966, mm -hmm. by Ennio Morricone, directed by Sergio Salima, starring Lee Van Cleef and Tomas Milian, Walter Barnes. This is released on the Red Yeti label, number 968265, with 25 tracks of music. And that was released, I think, earlier this week. Anyways, here's the, uh, the covers of the video and the LP. And... Basically, a place called Glory is like that um, uh, Quick Quick in the Dead, the Gene Hackman, Leonardo DiCaprio movie. Oh, yeah. It stars basically our winner two friends, Lex Barker and Marietta Cook and uh, Pierre Brice. Um, some sad news here for... Oh, I, ha I hate sad news, Tom. Well, some more obits? No, this is an, this oh. is an obit, sort of an obit. Uh, anybody from Italy will know that uh, after 20 years and 200 episodes, RAI TV has decided to cancel Stray Cult. Uh, if you've never seen this program, is dedicated to cinema fans. You can see archived episodes on YouTube. The show was devoted to popular film genres and covered films from Italy's golden age, including peplums, which are sword and sandal films, spaghetti westerns, spy, crime films. Each program is hosted by renowned cinema historian Marco Giusti, Andrea Delogu, and Fabrizio Biggio. Past episodes have featured many of the stars of the Spaghetti Western. Yeah, Tom. Robert, Robert Woods was on there several times. That's the only show worth, you know, not, RAA, that's where I got a ton of my Wells yeah. and Spaghetti yep. Western stuff. Someone Italian, you know, someone I'm corresponding with would have some rare stuff. Great stuff. I had Great stuff. documentaries. Yep. I had this uh, Mr. Arcaden documentary in the 80s before anybody did. Everybody wanted to get their hands on it. I go on some of these boards <laughs> and yep. I'd actually share. I go, trades open, folks. And that's how you get all your stuff. You offer yep. different, whether it's a Spaghetti Western or a Wells film or a film noir. Uh, but, that, you know, I have to say, though, in today's modern technology, Tom, you can basically get. Uh, whatever you want, if you look for if you look for it hard enough, yep. and people are willing to trade and exchange. Anyway, anything else in uh, weekly news, Tom? Yep. We also have a new Italian autobiography release called Fabrizio Frizzi Backstage Dia o Compositore, which is the backstage with the composer. Uh, Fabio Frizzi was with the group uh, Frizzi Tempera, and uh, I forgot the third guy, Bixio okay. Frizzi Tempera. It's Italian with 430 pages, released October 26th. Uh, I've also got, okay, uh, this is this is up your alley, Jay. All right. German, only for our German viewers, though. The German distillery, St. <laughs> Killian Distillers, is offering a single malt whiskey called Bud Spencer the Legend. Starting on November 16th, the Bud Spencer whiskey is made from 100% pure barley malt, aged for over three years in Amarone and ex-bourbon casks and was double distilled in the original Scottish pot stills. The whiskey is bottled in a seven-liter bottle with a wooden cork. Now, also to go along with the whiskey, they released this week a four German cheese pizza by Gustavo Gusto, which became available on Monday the 16th, featuring the Bud Spencer and Terrence Hill picture on a label. It's available in four different covers. Okay. So now we're going to have to try that pizza. Ooh. Forget the 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 <laughs> the, the, the um, God forgives I don't pepperoni. There you special, go. Yep. Tom. Okay. Yep. Now in anyway, passings we've got for, yes, passings Tom. we've got two. Uh, German voice actor Horst Schoen died in Berlin, Germany, on November 10th. Just found out about it this week. He was 94. Schoen was born in Berlin on December 25th, 25. Was a film and TV voice actor. 
He appeared in the 1973 Defa Western Apaches as Colonel Kenray, and in 1982's Thunder Warrior III as Bill. As a voice actor, he was the German voice of Luciano Bonani in 1971's It Can Be Done, Amigo, with Jack Palance and Bud Spencer, the voice of Gene Louise in 1971's Trinity Is Still My Name, the voice of Rick Battaglia in 1972's Deadly Trackers with Richard Harrison, uh, the voice of Fernando Ray in 1985's Wrestler's Rhapsody, and Bo Spencer in Thunder Warrior in 83. Uh, I'm, let's see Let's see how your uh, musical expertise is on this one. All right. Um, Hungarian-born composer and teacher Ivan Vandor died in Venice, Italy on November 15th. He was 88. He was born Ivan Weiss in Pex, Hungary on October 13th, 1932. His family moved to Rome when Ivan was only six. He began studying violin and then piano at the age of eight, and from 48 to 54 was tenor sax in the group Roman New Orleans Jazz Band. He was the composer of only one Euro Western. Do you know what it is? Of course, Mask of Zorro. No, Django Kill. Oh. Our favorite Tomas <laughs> Milian. The amazing only one that he scored, and it was that, yeah. Well, Tom, I tell you something. Sometimes you give these people more airtime than their actually career. <laughs> Well, but, weird. Uh, it's weird that you didn't hear about this guy forever. All of a sudden, he pops up. But anyway, no obits quick. are important. These are great passings. This is your specialty. Yeah. Tom's been reporting obits. You like the Rona Barrett of spaghetti westerns, Tom. Uh, birthdays this week. Okay. Um, let's see if let's see how many of these you remember. Guy Stockwell. Right. He would have been eighty-six on the sixteenth. He died in 20, 2002. Uh, Barbara Frey turned seventy-nine on the seventeenth. He nice. was married to Mark Damon. Okay. Uh, David Warbeck would have been 79 on the 17th. He died in 97. He was in Ducky Sucker, played the love interest that uh, um, James Coburn shared with the girl. Oh, okay. Right, right, right here. Yeah. Cha, la, la. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Aurora Julia, known as Monica Randall, turned 78 on the 18th. Emma Cohen would have been 74 on the 21st. She died in 2016. She was in Cutthroats 9, the girl in Cutthroats 9. Right. And Esperanza Roy turned 85 on the 22nd. Or will turn 20 on the 22nd. What's her name again? Esperanza Roy. Oh, what's she in? I don't have it written down. Oh, okay. Probably one or two Spanish westerns. That's fine. And that's what I got. Anyway, that's the, the weekly news. Tom always tells us what's happening, and we always appreciate that. And so now it's time to, uh, I guess, give a shout out to uh, the Spaghetti Western groups on Facebook for, uh, I guess, um, watching. And a lot of the members there are fans of this show. So there's about 10 groups. And we always start off, Tom, with the first and the best. And who would, what would that be? Oh, yeah, Westerns All Italiana. And then, of course, uh, 800 Spaghetti Westerns. Once Upon a Time in Italy, uh, the Spaghetti Westerns group with John Delaney there in the beard. Spaghetti Western movie posters, uh, El Miglio del Western All Italiana. Spaghetti Westerns Unchained, of course, Fanatiques de Western Spaghetti. Opera of Violencia, and our two friends Hulk Janoon and Hideki Uno, who a little bit of their footage was used uh, today uh, for our opening, our intro on the great Mario Brega. And of course, we cannot uh, have a show on, Tom, without giving thanks to our Lord and Savior, Sebastian Hasselbeck, and his... Uh, <laughs> I'm crossing myself four times, Tom. There you uh, go. I can't thank uh, Sebastian enough for uh, putting our banner on his main page since we first started. Uh, he understands how important it is to get Spaghetti Western news and updates and just having fun talking about a great underrated genre. So he jumped on board from the beginning and said, whatever I can do to help you guys. And so we joined. Uh, we joined his band of merry men, Tom. He calls it the mothership of Spaghetti Westerns, the SWDB. That's right. The website That's right. Tom Betts uses daily and nightly, Tom. Yeah, sometimes at night, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mainly first thing in the morning. Find out something. Mainly first thing in the morning. Yeah. It is a fantastic website. 
all your needs. And then, of course, you want to watch this this podcast, and you want to uh, also check out Tom's Westerns All Italiana uh, Facebook page and blog. Let's see. Anything else you want to talk about? A shout out to anybody, Tom? Not really. Not really. Yeah, whatever. Not for, Tom only did make his shout outs uh, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. So anyway, uh, I want to thank everybody for watching out in the Spetty Western land. Uh, Tom and I enjoy bringing you these weekly podcasts based on a great film or actor or location or a producer or a group of people all related to the spaghetti western genre and we appreciate each and every one of you for watching live and uh on tape delay when this when this all these shows are archived here on facebook and youtube all 27 tom you want to see episode 14 you want to see the robert woods interview was that episode five or six you want to see us talk to courtney joiner or brad halsey or mike malloy or our round table with four different uh authors it's all there, your needs with Tom's uh, Western All Italiana and the SWDB. You have a trifecta of information. All right, Tom, I'm out of breath. So anything you want to uh, say to all your fan base? That's it for this week. We we'll hope to see you next week. We're going to cover the uh, Romanos Tajon. I think you'll, you'll, you'll find out a little bit more information than we know, thanks to uh, Jose Jr., and uh, Gemma, uh, Angel's daughter, been helping us quite a bit this week, okay. supplying the films that they were in and uh, some background information on them. Yeah, and with with uh, with uh, rare photos too, Tom. Yep. So anyway, thanks once again. To remind you, we're here every Friday live on Facebook and YouTube uh, at uh, twelve noon Pacific uh, Standard Time, three o'clock Eastern. Uh, 9, 9 p.m. in uh, Europe and 8 p.m. in the UK. Uh, your one-stop podcast for everything Spaghetti Western. For Tom Betts, Tom always says what? Adios, amigo. Adios, amigo. And I always say adios. Compañeros. Compañeros. <laughs>